to have her on this topic, uh, a topic really close to my heart because I think fundamentally AI is going to change our lives and we want to make sure as it changes our lives, it changes in an unbiased fashion. Uh, it does not learn from the behaviors that we've had so far. So really keen on listening to that. And, and I also want to welcome uh, the audience who have joined us, um, uh, our Terra Talk uh, platform, and we get um, guests like Sing Sing to come and talk about their expertise and also what they care about when it comes to gender gap and technical field. We've had a great career uh, in transformation, transformations in operations and sales and finance and HR, legal, and a bunch of different functions. How did it start? I know data can go anywhere, but tell me how you move to different organizations and help them out. Yeah, um, I would say fundamentally it started with uh, an internal curiosity and the desire to help others, probably like a lot of our listeners today. Um, uh, I'm an immigrant uh, to the U.S. and I grew up and spent time in both New Jersey and Virginia uh, before going to school in New York. And when I decided to study engineering, I wanted to solve real world problems. Um, that uh, drive to solve problems took me to industry and I developed financial services expertise from there. Um, and when I added with my uh, MBA consulting best practices and that business acumen, it allowed me to connect the dots mm -hmm. and look at teams and issues across silos. Um, and it, you mentioned data. There's definitely the data aspect, but there's also the people side of things. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how I think of true business transformation and oftentimes digital transformation. <laughs> and, and that's what, um, uh, um, how we see transformation that, that sticks. That's how I would define transformation that sticks. Okay. You know, one of the questions I always get from uh, people is, how did you move from one organization to the other? Your expertise is in one area. How did you, what hurdles did you have to go through? How did you get the courage, courage to go into new areas where you didn't have any background? So how do you explain that to people? Uh, I think there are two aspects. I think, uh, you know, we're talking about AI. So the pace of change itself um, is fascinating, right? I think um, if, as someone who is involved in innovation, um, is uh, telling that story of value um, uh, without overinflating the outcome. That is a key part of the storytelling. And so um, I think throughout my career, I have connected to people that I've worked with. And, and I've been at many organizations, but a, a common thread amongst those are, are the people I've worked with. You know, people I've worked with 10, 20 years ago, I'm still working with now. And, and so those are um, commonalities. Um, but at the same time, like as um, I mentioned in, in terms of innovation and change, um, those were things that um, I, I found an affinity to and luckily had the opportunity to also drive and lead throughout uh, those connectors. Um, so um, I've uh, led innovation hubs, um, uh, you know, uh, incubated uh, businesses. Uh, these are all opportunities I've had in corporate and as well as in consulting, uh, working with um, small organizations or smaller organizations that are spinning out of um, Fortune 500s, right? So these are all a great, and um, uh, I think, that interest and that uh, specialization, although it connected across all of these different functions, it got me uh, from uh, financial services initially to other areas like health and also in um, career and talent. Um, these are all things that, um, uh, you know, you, you add on to your tool belt <laughs> and, and you, you build that experience over time. Um, in something like AI, it being relatively new, there, there are lots of types of AI who have, uh, that's been around for a long time. And, you know, I, I've been in AI for, um, uh, you know, close to 10 years as well. Uh, but people who say that they've done it all in AI are probably, <laughs> um, you know, not fully truthful or are overselling themselves. But mm -hmm. when we think about all of the 
these um, experiences and the ability to apply these experiences to new situations. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's, I think, a way to think about your career and, and looking at hurdles that are new and um, navigating around them. Yeah, yeah. As Michael Jordan said, you miss 100% of the shots if you then don't take one. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Oh. So go for it, go for it. Okay. So um, uh, as we are talking about this, why don't you share with us uh, some of the hurdles you may have faced as you grew in your career and how did you navigate them? Yeah, um, I, I mentioned a little bit about, um, you know, the technologies changing and innovation um, being a different shiny new object <laughs> over the years. Um, you know, I think IoT was always out there. Um, the metaverse, you know, people are still talking about and is in the future quantum, right, is uh, out there for us as well. Um, AI has really captured the imagination of both uh, technologists as well as the general public. And um, I think in terms of hurdles, um, I think it, sometimes it is um, the consistent uh, investment in innovation, right? Like um, in, um, it's very different. Uh, I've had some opportunities to um, uh, be an associate in venture capital when I was in business school, and then later on um, look at um, uh, investments in corporate. Uh, venture capitalists, when you're looking at uh, a fund can have a slightly longer view than um, a corporate which has, uh, you, know, you, you have your quarterly earnings, you have all of those things. So um, it is uh, harder to stay consistent to uh, a certain area of innovation from that perspective. So uh, I think those are hurdles. Um, uh, I think, um, you know, I've uh, seen and gone through multiple iterations of these um, innovation teams who are some of the best and brightest, um, but you know sometimes are impacted by these uh, short-term um, decisions. And this is both from teams that I've led, um, mm -hmm. that I've been part of, but also I, that I've partnered with as well. So you know, um, um, partner, uh, you know, in, in my current role at Accelerate, I'm partnered with a number of technology platforms, and, and even there, you know, I see innovation teams uh, go through some of these changes. Um, so, so I think those are uh, hurdles that uh, we all face and I have definitely faced in my career. Yeah. How did it impact your career? How did it impact career? Um, I, I, you know, we've all thought of and practiced resilience through the pandemic. And I say that is a muscle that I have continued to build through, through, <laughs> through this, these types of hurdles. Um, and um, at the same time, I think um, uh, it also builds opportunity. That means uh, mm -hmm. folks have um, uh, identified the, the foundations, they have tested some things and, and someone needs to take that next step. Um, so, yeah. uh, you know, in building AI technologies, someone has to do that next step for uh, implementation into a new yeah. uh, industry, for example, you know, taking yeah, innovations yeah. from one area to another. You know, the interesting thing is I always look at all companies and what percent of revenue they invest in innovation. And it is very clear the companies that invest a lot in innovation are always ahead of the others. The companies that invest the least, they are just the same old, same old companies. So um, it does show in a business results. Uh, so companies that are able to think longer term are going to be a longer term companies. <laughs> and that's, that's what it is. But I yeah. uh, just wanted to also uh, say uh, to the folks in the audience, if you have a question, please type it in. I'll make sure to ask uh, Sing Sing. So go ahead and do that while I ask, while I ask the next question I got. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, when I, we started the Terra Talk, our focus today is getting more women into AI. And what is your assessment of AI today? Where, uh, how things are doing? What are the opportunities and risks uh, for the audience if they're interested in AI? Yeah. Um, so let's uh, take a step back and define AI. Okay. Um, AI is a set of technology that mimic 
humans. They do what we do. And so you can insert the verb, you know, <laughs> it does, um, it writes, it, 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 um, it, uh, you know, helps me collate, it summarizes all of these things. Um, it does what we ask it to do. And there are many techniques from machine learning to statistics, um, deep learning to operations research. These are all AI techniques and um, most jurisdictions and standards bodies uh, across the globe regulate across all of these techniques. And, um, and in terms of the marketplace as well, um, we know that, you know, there, you know, folks are talking about the hype curve and uh, where we are and investors are not seeing some of the returns because of um, the, the excess amount potentially <laughs> of investment early on, um, but digital giants are still doubling down in this competitive and, and very strategic uh, landscape. So um, I think the, uh, the, the wide range of early adoption success to you know, stories that you hear about, um, CTOs pausing their, their Gen AI investment are, are all valid. Um, but at the same time, it is how do we think about the, these outcomes? Um, in the end, AI is a set of technologies and tools, and it's what we decide to use it for that is the most important. And so there, there are lots of opportunities for um, those who are curious and resourceful, who know the business, who know users, right? Those things, we can define new ways for businesses to, um, uh, to run for new users to engage. And, and um, AI additionally gives a lot of opportunities for those who are interested in managing the risks and governing for AI as well. Um, you know, uh, Sangeeta, you started out talking about um, biases, right? There are gonna be changes in data products, um, how we communicate, how um, we, we set up our teams, but definitely, um, all of these things will have implications to, uh, you know, what we teach and almost like a, a parent <laughs> the the AI. Um, I, I I don't like to anthropomorphize um, AI, but, but as we think of um, AI getting more mature, who will teach and parent this technology, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, we know for a fact that the AI talent pool is not very diverse. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we need women to give that other voice. We need people with um, uh, different kinds of thinking, liberal arts degrees, critical thinkers. And um, we need folks to develop uh, and share that the worldview, not just the worldview that perhaps we have because we have inherent biases, that view plus our um, aspirational view, right? Like what mm -hmm. we want to design for, for the future. Mm -hmm. And and who, who's uh, better than um, the the young women of the next generation, um, the, the folks who are, again, curious and resourceful today. Yeah. And the thing is, if we parent this right, the, I like the word that you <laughs> used, uh, if we parent this right, we can actually remove bias really fast. Um, if we do it right, and if we let it slide, it's going to be forever uh, yeah. that it'll take to correct biases. Um, um, I have a question from Arvi. She's saying, many folks have started adding an expert in artificial intelligence as one of their skills. What skills make, make them an AI expert? What skills make a person an AI expert? Um... I think there are lots of aspects. It, it could be um, in a specific technology, like how it's uh, uh, how it's abstractly connected, how it's architectured, how it's actually coded. You know all these aspects. How um, the data is um, structured in order to train the AI. Those are all aspects that that form the um, the foundations of that um, AI technology. Um, but there are also other aspects like um, how to think about um, governing for responsible AI, um, how to um, think about 
the interaction between humans and AI, uh, such that, you know, we're, we're uh, I shouldn't say we're, uh, the, uh, the AI is supporting the, the people, right? Um, uh, and so um, certain tasks that we want to uh, simplify, increase our productivity, AI can do that for us. There are aspects of um, complexity that, um, you know, uh, we, we might need um, many, many Excel spreadsheets, many, many <laughs> runs of simulations to do that AI could simplify for us and, mm -hmm. um, and really take us uh, to some of the, uh, the science fiction that, that we um, read about or, or have seen in movies, but, but not so literal. You know, it's 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 still us being very much involved in that process. Yeah, so yeah. an AI expert could touch all of those parts, and um, and there are also going to be leaders who who can bring all those parts together. Yeah. So it, it's a, a good follow on is what's an AI expert and who could be the AI parent? Yeah. Yeah. Because AI um, expert doesn't necessarily mean you can actually parent. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. And um, so uh, Sangeeta and I, when we were um, kind of prepping for this a little bit, we were chatting about this. Uh, I started recently teaching um, technology management at Columbia. And um, students have asked me, and not just one, but multiple students have asked me <laughs> whether, um, you know, they're definitely interested in AI, uh, how they can be more involved. Is it better to be an AI expert or a business expert, right? Like to, you know, these dichotomies. Um, and I think AI experts are still, you know, th there's lots of depth there. There's a lot of expertise, a lot of PhDs in, in this area, but it's still an e evolving field at the same time. Um, they, uh, AI experts are still developing that expertise to some future state. Um, it, and, and we need that. So the technologies, um, are, are robust and, and production level. But um, the, the outcomes of those technologies would be more like a, a toy or a plaything rather than like a true tool or system without the business expertise, business knowledge. Um, and so AI cannot replace your lawyer, for example. Right, you, it can do some simple things, but you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, law could be very high risk and you're, you're probably not going to trust that fully to um, an AI. Yeah. And so, yeah. I, 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 was, I was just thinking, just like you have code reviews for developers, there has to be a review for the AI algorithms that we write. Um, I don't know if it's implemented. I'm sure in some uh, organizations it is, but that could be a good way to parent. <laughs> yeah, the uh, reviewing the code, the the also the outcomes, right? Just testing yeah, that, yeah. Um, and the ultimate decision. I think a lot of organizations have adopted this. Um, you know, AI can give you ten options, but the ultimate final decision is still a person, because yeah. in the end, who who is ultimately liable? Or are you going to say the engineer is liable if something goes wrong? Yeah. Um, you know, people talk about like the kill switch and, and things uh, to help us um, manage the downside risk. Um, but yeah, it, all of those things are in play and you still need to know um, the business um, or the users or, you know, the, the situation as, uh, as a um, authentic, you know, full uh, human being, like bringing our, our full selves. In. And, and I think that's where women particularly will excel and, and need to be involved. Um, yeah. So. OpenAI and others are working on like very domain specific models. And, and you know, you, you said it right, that validation, the rigor that is needed to make it relevant and germane um, and applicable to yeah. different functions and industries. Um, that's where uh, we need those business AI experts to be very yeah. involved. Yeah, we kind of touched upon this topic of gender uh, equity in AI. Yeah. Uh, can you give us some examples why it is important to have that um, gender equity in AI? Um, we we talked about why it's important to just reduce bias, but um, I think uh, in the UN report, uh, like a lot of technologies, there are going to be haves and have-nots. 
if women aren't involved, if underrepresented um, individuals are not involved, then there's going to be a larger and larger gap as we go along. Um, and uh, that is definitely not the outcome that we would want. And so, you know, what we are talking about is um, architecting and creating the, the foundation, the infrastructure for the AI before it's developed that far. Um, I know it, AI became so popular because some of the, um, uh, you know, companies out there just let us be the guinea pigs, right? And so we saw all the mistakes, all of the, you know, hallucinations, all of the issues uh, with the AI. But for, for us to use it well, we need to be ahead of that. We have to develop the, the values, the ethics, the rules for that AI, what type of data is involved, um, how to guide it in advance yeah. of, of um, it being fully developed. Yeah, I, when I think about like product design, whether it is a car or a plane, uh, one of these big things that we all use in our everyday life. Um, and you look at a lot of these things are designed for men because men are designing some of many of these things. And, uh, and, and similarly AI app, there are certain things that women would want and somehow they are not there. They would yeah. love to have it, but it's based on the feedback they're getting from the audience they have. So, so I think there are bit, lots of examples of this where the product can get skewed. For example, I was just discussing a medical device that was launched by a company and within uh, a month, they had to pull it back because uh, they did not design it for the women. They only, the, the, all the designers were all men in the team. So they had to pull it back. That actually caused them loss of revenue. Now, with some of the AI stuff, since it's cerebral, it's more, it's not as tangible. Sometimes it is tangible. Sometimes it is not tangible. Yeah. How do you fix that? So that's, that's something that will be constant in our minds. There's another question from Pam. As a current data analytics professional, how do we get started in AI? What are the three main skills we should learn? Um, as a data and analytics professional. So I think you're probably already pretty familiar with um, you know, the, the data flow and the processes from, from cleansing to, to analytics to um, you know, the, the higher level either uh, driving outcomes and insights, which is, I think, uh, more foundational. But then to um, to drive and connect that to ROI. Um, so I, again, I think there's um, the bit of uh, how can we innovate on that data stack that you may be working in um, quite a bit, but um, also considering what are specific uh, business ROIs that we can connect that to. So, uh, uh, you know, more revenue, uh, lower costs, those types of things are pretty basic. Um, but uh, with biases in mind, what are those levels of biases that you also want to incorporate? And if, you know, in terms of um, governance, if, if your organization has not adopted uh, either governance or COEs or, you um, uh, uh, committees you know, for uh, driving AI initiatives and governing for AI initiatives, then, then that's a good place to also raise your hand. Yeah, yeah. Um, is there any specific technical skill that they could learn, which would give them a um, head start in wanting to work in AI? Um, uh, I think the there a multitude of AI ML courses out there. I think that mm -hmm. gives you a good sense of um, the pattern recognition um, for uh, AI. And I think those are, are good ones. Uh, okay. But I'm assuming uh, maybe uh, for, for someone who, who's already in data, you, you might have been exposed to some of this. Um, I think the other aspects are um, in terms of uh, actually the the people side um, mm -hmm. so how we are structured in teams 
whether mm-hmm. it's like very hierarchical or very flat, right? How how does AI potentially fit in there, right? Yeah. Um, in terms of how we communicate with each other or how we're supported or how we um, uh, have uh, workflows between each other, right? Yeah. Handoffs between each other. Since we are running close to our time, uh, yeah. Uh, one last question. Any advice you have for the women who want to be hired into AI or the employers who want to hire women in AI? Mm, uh, for women who want to move into AI, um, find hands-on opportunities to get involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether, you know, it may be at work and raising your hand, as we mentioned, or it could be by building a community of those who are interested and, and even testing products um, that are out there and, okay. and you know sharing your thoughts. Um, for employers, I would encourage you to um, you know, look for talent. Um, I, I don't wanna say hidden gems, but folks who have the potential, right? As I mentioned a little bit earlier, folks who say they, they've done all this stuff in AI are, are um, it's not going to be, you know, it's still a new field. It's um, uh, going to be pretty rare and it's going to be, um, uh, you know, something that um, you're going to have limitations on being um, able to hire for uh, truly AI talent that has all of the things on your list. But mm-hmm. um, the potential for folks to learn AI and, and also uh, understand how, how we would want AI to work on behalf of us is yeah. um, something that you can train for and, and grow your people into. Yeah. Cool, great advice. Yeah. And uh, yes, uh, you can follow on on some of these questions. You can j- join Gotara if you haven't already and ask these questions. People like Sing Sing are advisors on our platform and they'll answer your questions. Um, but with that, I want to close and thank you, Sing Sing, for a wonderful uh, chat. Uh, clearly, there are lots of questions, follow-up questions after that, which is awesome. And uh, thank you to the audience who joined us. Hopefully, you learned something. I learn something every time I have a guest. And I did learn from you, Sing Sing, so thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, and uh, if you aren't already a member, become one because you'll get all kinds of advice that you want to remove hurdles at your work. So do that. And as we always say, hashtag spiral, spiral up. All right. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.